Hey guys, it's Rick and welcome to River Rack Cabin. Today I want to walk through some of the projects Cam and I have been working on. We have about a thousand of them going at the same time. These are some of the ones that we've gotten finished. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's take a peek. <laughs> caught up in the flood and builds up everywhere you get big piles of debris that's where that came from and we just put a couple knobs on there uh, these came from family they had them left over from a project they were doing I believe they got them on Amazon and we just stuck it to the wall and that's where we hang everything we need to hang the planter next to me came from Amazon you could probably make this yourself I don't know why we didn't uh, we just ordered it it's all this is a round piece of wood with three pieces of rope coming up and it's looped around at the top. Super simple. It looks amazing though. And the plant hanger I have up here is just pieces of pipe that I got from a big box hardware store. There's three 90s, an end cap, three close nipples, a four inch nipple, and a base plate. And I just screwed them all together loose. I didn't have to crank them down or anything. And to mount it, the very top screw, it's got like four screw holes. The top screw is actually a drywall anchor and the screw head was silver so I took a black magic marker and just colored it black and I put three drywall screws around to kind of keep it from spinning around any. Not that it would but now I know it definitely won't. So that My TV wall, I love this thing. All I really did was I've got seven 2x4s attached to the wall back here. I relocated an electrical outlet that was behind the wood box for the wood stove stand and I moved it up behind the television to hide the wires and you don't have to worry about wires being everywhere. On those seven two by fours, I then came along with this recycled wood. I got this from Lowe's. I think it was like 40 bucks for 40 square feet. Came in a little package. I doubt you can get that anymore. It's just the way things are getting lumber and things like that. But I have no doubt that this would be just as easy to do with maybe some pallet wood or something like that. Just put you some two by fours. Unfortunately, I use new ones. Had I known that two by fours were gonna be $10, $15 a board, I would have never buried new ones back here. I would have used some old scrap junk that I had, but the ones I put back there were only like four bucks a pop. So it is what it is and they're back there now. The reason I had to use seven is because of my joints, where all my joints lined up. I wanted to make sure that I had something to tack into to give it good support. Even though these are tie and groove, they kind of fit in together really well. But 
I love it. And on the corners, I even took the time to cut off little pieces and go down the sides along the wall. But my biggest issue was gonna be on these corners where I had these boards. It looked really bad. So I went and got this angle iron. Uh, this is just aluminum angle iron. I picked it up at a big box hardware store. I think it was about $20 a piece. And I was gonna paint it black. So I, <laughs> I cut it to fit and I came up here and put it on there. And I was standing back looking at it and Cam walked in and she goes, that looks really good. And I realized I didn't have to paint it. I wanted to paint it kind of a hammered black color to blend in with the, the wood stove and some of the other iron work that we have going on in here. And I realized that the silver is beautiful. It's fine the way it is. And to attach it, I drilled a couple of holes and countersank them in that track on the inside edge back here. And I just used some little screws and tapped it in there. And it is nice, it is good. It ain't going anywhere, that's for sure. And uh, it, it's perfect, it fits, the, it fits the house perfectly. So that's my TV stand. You can tell I'm really proud of that, right? This is the Grizzly Mini Cubic Wood Stove. It's rated for 400 square feet. We have 520 square feet in here. It's always nice and toasty, 72 to 80 degrees. Uh, it gets too hot, you just open the windows, you turn this thing down. I got this out of, can out of Canada, it was 600 bucks. And I know that sounds a little expensive, but this little beast is well worth it, because this thing is a working machine. If you put cheap, soft wood into it, it you're gonna be loading it probably every hour. If you use good hard wood, you've got about three hours of burn time. The heat shield is the worst part of, of getting this put in, because I didn't know what to use really, being kind of a custom install. The shield that came with this wood stove was like an extra 150 bucks. And it was very small and it was meant to just kind of stick this directly on the wall. And it just sat on a little shelf on that. And that's cool on an RV or a, what this is really designed is for like a sailboat or something like that. It works really well in a small cabin, I can tell you that. But I'm not gonna pay 150 bucks for a heat shield. And I was looking at the other materials like the custom heat boards that they have, just too expensive. So what I did was I got some of this roofing material and I put some spacers back behind it. I, I wanna say they're three inch spacers. And all I did was I bought some conduit, I cut off some three inch chunks and I used that to space it off the wall. And I can tell you when this thing is kicking, I, I uh, tent gunned it before, when it's kicking, it's about 450, 500 degrees is what it's putting off. I temp gun this heat shield back here and it's reading 250, 275. You walk over and touch the steel and it's not hot at all. It's, it's a little warm, but you can put your hand on it and hold it. And back behind against where the drywall is, it's never been above 70 degrees while this thing's running. So that worked out perfectly. And to hang it, I just used some bolts. I bought some longer bolts and it's just toggled going all the way up. This is all one piece and it worked out kind of perfect. The height of my base for the wood stove is designed so that I can see the fire through the window from across the room sitting on the couch. I know, I'm selfish. It's pretty cool though. And these are just fire, or fire bricks, they're not even fire bricks. These are paving, patio paving stones that I bought and put them all together before I even started to, to design this base part. I needed to know how big my pad was gonna be and then I built the box underneath. That worked out perfectly. As you can see, I'm not finished. I still have some bare wood showing. I'm going to add some more decorative trim that comes down and hides all this. I'm still working on the wood box. The, the box down here stores enough wood for about three days worth of heat. And yeah, that's pretty cool. I gotta finish that, I gotta finish that. I wanna talk about the rocks because these rocks have hours and hours invested into them. Not only did we have to go out to the river and we sat on a sandbar, I don't know for how many nights. It was a good time doing it, but we picked each and every stone out of the sandbar, we put them in buckets, brought them back up, we washed them all, sterilized them, sorted them, 
and I was actually able to talk Cam into doing a design on here when she attached them to the side of this. I can't believe she did it. She was so patient. She was so wonderful about it. She did it. The other side has no design, so I'm, I'm lucky I got what I got, but I think it's pretty, pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to when this is finished. I'm looking forward to showing you guys when this is finished because this has been one of my fun, funner projects, this and the TV wall. I've really enjoyed those. Doing electrical, doing plumbing, drywall work, that's just work. But when you can get creative and do things like this, this is what makes it all fun. This is what makes it all worth it. So, so this is the main living area. This room, actually what we did was we had the couch and then we made room to fit the couch. And then we threw that couch out and bought one the exact same size to replace it that was just newer. But this all is really nice because you can sit in here, you can chat with somebody that's cooking. The counter is to give us plenty of workspace. These cabinets, um, we did these ourselves. So the countertop is really a two foot. This one was two foot by eight foot, just a piece of board. It was three quarter inch thick. And that side was uh, two foot by six foot. And they fit perfectly on top of the counter. And then I bought some MDF board to put underneath them. I cut it to fit, they're the same size. I glued and screwed them together to give it that nice thick cabinet. And then the edging is just some one by, and I just ripped it to an inch and a quarter, same thickness as the top itself. And I'm no carpenter, but it looks okay. The cool thing about this rustic cabin life is you don't have to be perfect. Just get it close. It'll look good. That's, that's the trick. The finish on it is a, a light stain and I want to say a light oak stain and then Cam put tongue oil all over it. Uh, that's tongue, T-U-N-G. She put tongue oil all over it. Tongue oil is great. I, I love this stuff. The only issue with it was it was tacky for about a month after we put it on here. It was a little sticky. It wasn't too bad, but it was a little bit sticky. And there's probably ways to get around that, but we didn't figure it out. The coolest thing about tongue oil is if I screw this up and I put a big deep gash in it or something, we can just sand that out, put some, some new tongue oil in that spot, and it's good as new. We're good to go. My biggest screw up when I put this in was my electrical. I didn't think about putting an electrical outlet to run my toaster or my Instapot or my air fryer or anything like that. So this is an afterthought. This is just a little countertop power strips, all it is. It's got a cord that comes off of it. I drilled a hole under the cabinet, so it's running up the top here. And I, I tapped into some electrical under the house and brought it up through with the plumbing and put in a box. So this is literally just plugged into an electrical outlet. Uh, I've got the two USB chargers. I got this on Amazon, it was 30 bucks. They have much more expensive ones. That was cheap and it works fine. So that's what we went with. The coolest thing about this is we try to be thrifty. We're not rich. God, I wish we were rich, but we're not rich. So we do what we can when we can. So. When I say we've been working on this for a few years, that's part of the reason. We just can't run and get everything. I've been lucky enough to be able to go and buy in advance like three or four projects and just get materials for them. And it's there when I need it. And times like this, when the price of everything's going up, it's worked out really good for me because I have several other projects I'm working on right now where I was able to get my materials a lot cheaper. So if you're going to do a project, buy your material buy your material, set it to the side. Even if you don't have time to get in on that project yet, if you've got a little extra change in the bank, get it. Get it, store it somewhere. On the sink, this is just a cheap stainless sink. I knew that I needed a, an RO water filter for down here because we are so close to the river. And a sink that had an extra opening in it was a lot more expensive. I guess it cost a lot of money to drill a hole in stainless steel. And I did not have the room or necessarily wanted my spigot coming off over here in my countertop. So I bought the cheap sink and I spent a little more money on my faucet so I can still have my sprayer and I still got my RO water dispenser. It works out really nice. That's just an Apex uh, RO water filter. I got it at the Home Depot, got it online. It works great. 
I'm very happy with that. That was a good investment. Just a quick little hack. The hand soaps that you get, the Myers, the label comes off and you can put your dish soap in there. For some reason, I think I'm genius because I did that. But. So last but not least is our pantry. I had no pantry in here. And as a matter of fact, this entire wall was not here the way it sits back like that, the recess. Um, I, I took out the closet from the bedroom because we just kind of built our own closet in there. And I used that space to slide back my stove and my refrigerator. And what that did was it gave me a lot more room in my kitchen. So it makes it seem a lot bigger in here than what it really is. But it's just a way to utilize space the best I can. And I built this so that I could have a place to keep all my goodies. And it actually stops right here as far as the shelves go. And on the front, it's just a little spice rack that I picked up at Amazon, little five rack. It makes it look like it's really full in there when there's only half of the space in there that, that you see. So again, that illusion. And this, this is just framed out with two by fours. And this wall is actually just plywood. And I cut this down to like six inch strips and we put it on there and we use a little uh, nickel on each piece to give it the right size gap. It gave it just a little enough gap to run in a, a line of caulk. And then when we painted it, it looked like it was meant to do that. So it, it worked out really nice. You can do a lot with plywood. This chalkboard is the best thing I've ever put in this cabin in my life. Even better than the electrical outlet in the countertop. I use this thing a lot. I use it all the time and it was super easy to make. All it is is just a piece of plywood again and the chalkboard paint painted over it and then I bought some pretty trim that I liked and just trimmed it out. It's just nailed to the wall. It's, that's all it is. This is stuck to the wall on the outside and then I went over it with the trim so you can't see the nails. Works out perfect. Cheap little Walmart clock. Looks really good up there. So um, yeah, that's the pantry. The reason this only goes up so high is because on this back side, I left a cubby so I could slide my trash cans in there. Small spaces, you gotta have smart ideas. So, so those are some of my fav more favorite projects that we've been into. This has been such an adventure for both me and Cam, and we're glad that we were able to share it with you. We hope you give you some ideas on your own adventures and your own projects that you're doing. Just remember, it's you got to think outside the box, make the best of what you have, and it doesn't have to be brand new materials. You don't have to spend a fortune. You don't have to hire a professional. If you don't know how to do it, learn. Go to the University of YouTube and, and search out whatever it is you're doing. You're putting in a new electrical outlet, watch 10 or 15 videos on it, and you'll begin to understand what the do's and don'ts are. Now, I recommend you go touch electricity, but... You can do it if you set your mind to it. Wait, one more thing before I go. I want to share some river scenes. That's what really makes River Rack Cabin so magical is that river. Enjoy.